And we bring you back live to the Chinese gambling colony of Macau, where it's time for a featherweight title fight between Vasily Lomachenko of Ukraine and Sean Latarn Alpirio Pino of Thailand. You're saying, why is it Alpirio Pino? There's no letter there to indicate that sound. Well, your guess is as good as ours, but according to Sean Latarn, the name is Alpirio Pino. The silent A-W, what are you talking about, Jim? And how about the silent I at the end of Basile, okay? It's Vasily Lomachenko. It's not exactly silent. It's the suggested That's AW it. and That's the right. suggested I, right? That's right. Yeah, exactly whatever they are. But the bottom line of this Vasily Lomachenko against Sean Latarn, Apirio Bindio, and you see the three-year age advantage for the Ukrainian fighter. One and a half inch height advantage for him. Arm length advantage of one inch measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. And they both weighed in at 126 pounds. And here's Lomachenko, regarded by many as the greatest amateur fighter of all time. 396 wins, one loss as an amateur. That loss twice avenged. And only three fights as a professional, if you don't count the six fights in the World Series of Boxing. We've been over it before. Bottom line, he's the most precocious fighter of this age with this background ever to have appeared in the sport. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Venetian Macau Hotel Resort, the action continues, and it's all brought to you by Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated, along with MP Promotions and Foreman Boys Promotions, Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing. Sponsored by Tecate Con Character and Empire. Coming to Fox in January 2015, when you mix music, family, and power, the battle begins. Don't miss Empire on Fox. Viber, Viber spelled with a V, our official messaging calling app and the ringtone of the fight. Follow us on Viber. This bout is sanctioned by the PBCC Executive Director Leon P. Panacilio Jr. and the World Boxing Organization President Francisco Paco Barcarcel, Supervisor for the WBO, Luis Perez. The three judges scoring this contest at ringside, Savin Lugumbe, Patrick Morley, and Michael Pernick. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, referee Luis Pabon. And now from the Venetian Macau, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Featherweight Championship of the World. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing yellow, weighing in officially at 126 pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one. 51 victories, including 33 knockouts. Only one defeat from Shonburi, Thailand. The challenger, he's the WBO Asia Pacific champion, Chan Latan Pirapino. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing brown with gold. Official weight, 126 pounds. This three-time amateur world champion and two-time Olympic gold medalist captured a world title as a professional in just his third professional contest. From Akraman, Ukraine, the reigning, defending, WBO featherweight champion of the world, Tommy Gaspada, Vasily Lomachenko. Everybody's out, one hand. One, one. I thought left. No, 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 no. Go, go ahead, go, go. One, 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 one. One, 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 one. Okay, guys, I give you instruction in the dressing room. They're having a clean match, okay? Good luck. God bless you. Paul Piri Apinu is the uh, number one contender in the sanctioning body. And, uh, but he was not due for a mandatory shot at the belt. Lomachenko told his people, I want to fight one of the other belt holders. They said, none of them are available. He said, then get me the number one contender. If he's not available, get me the number two contender. If he's not available, the number three. Lomachenko wants to fight the best available featherweight every fight. Exactly the mentality you might expect from a guy who won two Olympic gold medals one at 125 pounds and then another at 132 pounds. Won two world championship gold medals. 
one at 125 pounds and another at 132 pounds. And just to repeat the statistic because it's so astonishing, 307 or 397 amateur fights, 396 of them wins. And the one loss was avenged. And twice. as a pro, twice, and as a pro, so he got the better of it. And as a pro, the one loss was to a veteran, rugged fighter in Salido who came in way over the weight, hydra rehydrated to way over that. Um, Had about a 20-pound functional weight advantage over Lomachenko in the ring. Fouled Lomachenko a hundred times, and I don't even think that's hyperbole, and was lucky that he held on and wasn't knocked out at the end of the fight. That's Lomachenko's one loss. The bottom line is the guy's a great fighter. On the other hand, Alperio Pino, as you pointed out, has 51 wins in 52 fights. The only loss was to Chris John, the Indonesian star who was a great technician. Now here he is against another great technician. You just saw Alperio Pino throw a body shot with the left hand. That's his money punch. The left hook to the body is what wins fights for Sean Latarn, Alperio Pino. And Lomachenko is a guy who, if he feels his opponent, if he sees that the opponent can apply good pressure, will move if he has to. But if he sees something early on that tells him he needs to apply pressure, that's what he's going to do. He's a really versatile, well-rounded fighter. And here, Lomachenko is the aggressive pressure fighter. Lomachenko in his last fight clearly defeated American Gary Russell Jr. in a fight in which Russell threw and threw and threw but couldn't find Lomachenko, landed at an exceptionally low percentage. And Lomachenko hammered him with body shots repeatedly, drove him into the ropes when he wanted to, generally dominated the fight. Yeah, and I don't care how protected Russell has been. Low He's blow a by really Lomachenko. really good, really fast fighter. And uh, Lomachenko completely outclassed him. Lomachenko got away with a low blow as referee Luis Pabon was apparently behind the wrong shoulder at that moment for the purpose of seeing it. So Lomachenko makes Operio Pino pay for some of the hundred or so low blows that he took from Orlando Salido. How easily Lomachenko, oftentimes he's probing with that right foot to establish position. I don't think against Alpiro Pino, he feels like he needs to probe with the foot, but he's always in position as a southpaw, meaning his front foot is outside of his opponent's front foot. Always in position as a southpaw to land his power punches. Well, his footwork is so brilliant. He may be the first guy I've ever seen who can fake you with the front foot. He'll put it where you don't expect it to be and then put it in another place and fire the punch. And now, pay more attention. Sometimes you get too relaxed after you attack. You're provoking him. He raises his arm. And after that, you must be more, pay more attention so that it doesn't happen again. You must feel, try to feel better, and after the attack, be more, more careful and don't drop your arms. Lomachenko's trainer is his father, Anatoly Lomachenko, the man who come has on, taught him boxing and been with him, of course, his whole life. Alperio Pino's trainer is Bobby Velaver, who works out of Hawaii, and you're going to see him in the next fight, as he's also the trainer to the Thai fighter who's the opponent for Zhao Ximing, Juan Pichet Wonsong Shaichin. And we're now joined at ringside by our expert commentator, Roy Jones, coming off of Jesse Vargas's victory in his first big showing as a trainer. And I'm sure we're going to see more. Congratulations, Roy. Thank you, guys. <coughs> Excellent performance by Vargas. And now we uh, pick up round two of Vasily Lomachenko against Sean Latarn, Alperio Pino. Sean Latarn. Sean Latarn, Alperio Pino. Sean Latarn. Yep. You can call him Sean. I'm going to call him Sean Latarn. <laughs> <laughs> Alperio Pino landed a couple of left hooks to the body in the first round. That's his money punch. But generally speaking, it was another display of 
Lomachenko's footwork, hand skills, general all-around aptitude for the game. He's a great boxer, even at this very early stage of his career, Roy. Yeah, you can't really call it an early stage of his career. You call it an early stage of his American professional career, but it's not really the early stage of his career. Anytime you got 400 amateur fights, there's no such thing as early in your career. Try this, 400 amateur fights, and one only loss, lost one, exactly. That, and then he beats the guy twice <laughs> in rematches. So there's no way this is considered early in your career. It's early in your American professional career, but that's about it. With two Olympic gold medals, <laughs> And one award to be for being the best fighter in the Olympic Games. I mean, this guy is as sensational an amateur background as anyone who's ever well, lived. There's enough Olympic and World Championship hardware in the building here tonight to sink a Chinese junk. And by the way, <laughs> that's not a bar, but the Chinese. That's a name for a boat. But when you consider two World Championships and two gold medals for Lomachenko, two gold medals and a bronze medal and two world championship golds and a silver medal for Zhou Ximing. And then, of course, the gold medal that Roy Jones was not given at Seoul in 1988. That's a lot of medal. That's a whole lot of medals. Roy, very few fighters can throw that right hook the way Lomachenko just did, or even a left hook, so quickly with accuracy and power as soon as he sees the opening. Yeah, what I like about what Lomachenko is doing right now is he's throwing pity pat punches to set up the real punches, meaning he's not putting all of his power on every shot. If you do that, that enables you to set up the big shots and take full advantage like that when he does see a clean shot. And while he's already moving, he has potential energy, so it's much easier to duck and dodge like that out of that movement. He counters so quickly. His counter punches arrive so fast that sometimes they look like leaves. And it looks as though he's dictating the action when in fact he's counterpunching because he's countering that fast. December 6th, Boxing After Dark returns with a triple header headline by Montreal knockout machine David Lemieux against Gabe Rosado. Also that night, Tomas Dulorme faces Hank Lundy and Hugo Centeno against James De La Rosa. <laughs> Body. Yes. Body. Look at the body. Hey, what a, what a, what yes. a body. Yeah. Uh, uh, punch your body. Back in, back in, back in, back in. Yep, yep, yep. Put more, yep, put more, yep. Look at that. Don't wait. Don't the wait. Law. Let it the go. Law. He's fine. Uh, Look, the the to wait. Coming too close mm -hmm. to your left body. On the left, Tatiana Lomachenko. On the right, Anastasia Lomachenko. His mother and his sister. This marks the first time that either has been to one of his American professional fights. Come to think of it, maybe it's a shorter trip for them to have come to Macau from <laughs> Ukraine than it would have been to go to, say, Las Vegas from Ukraine. Or Carson, California, where he fought Gary Russell Jr. Lomachenko's timing and rhythm are unbelievable. I mean, it, if he throws something, it's with a, an intention, Roy, and it does what he intends it oh, no, to no. do. Yes, it is. Everything he throws is with great intention, and like you said, it, it does exactly whatever he intends for it to do. What The thing that I also like about Lomachenko is the fact that he doesn't stay right in front of the guy. You see him, he's either going to the right or he's circling to the left. He never bags all the way up to the ropes before he makes his um, change to go left or right, like right here. You see him going to the right now. Right now, he'll go to the right again. Alternate circling to the left, which is away from Alperio Pino's left hook to the body, and then sometimes circling back to the right, forcing Alperio Pino to try to time that left hook to the body. It's not easy to do. No, he hurt. Uh, oh. He hurt him that time with that body shot, I think. Same way he hurt Orlando Salido in the 12th round with the body shot. Same way he hurt Gary Russell two or three times with body shots. Here he goes again, digging to the body. That was a big left hand by Lomachenko to the gut. Because he knows Sean Latorn is hurt to the body. He, Lomachenko is one of those matrix fighters, Roy. I always thought of you this way, maybe the ultimate example of it, where he, uh, I mean, do you see the other guy in slow motion? It looks to me as though he's watching the other guy, and the other guy is going in slow motion from his point of view. It is from our point of view because we make him do what we want him to do. Therefore, he is in slow motion because we're already five steps ahead, ahead, ahead of his next move. So we make him do exactly what we want him to do, and it seems like he's in slow motion because we're already reacting to what we know he has to do. Like, a, like an anticipation of the future. Pretty much what it is. And that explains Lomachenko's positioning when he throws his punches, his ability to 
not clash the head even as a southpaw to avoid the ropes with his back to move just enough where the where his punches land with the full intended effect And Shalaton is good at using his arms to block some of those body shots. He can't move his hands down there quick enough to block them, so he's blocking them with his arms. That's not a bad move for a guy that we haven't seen much of. Moment to moment, you can feel Sean Latarn Alperio Pinko's focus on that left hook to the body. He's thinking, okay, when can I land my money shot? This is what I've got to do to have any chance in the fight. Lunging right hands won't help him. His jab yeah. isn't much. He's got one punch. And that's his hook. Well, he was being beaten and outclassed by Chris John, but then came back to have some moments in that fight. Time, time. Chris John, even at his best, does not look to me the class of Lomachenko right now. Manny Pacquiao's mother, Dionysia. They share profound religious faith. Though Manny now attends a different church than that which she goes to. She complained about that publicly last year in the Philippines. Everything about Manny Pacquiao is public in the Philippines. <laughs> Sean Latarn Opirio Pinlo, Pinio, Opirio Pinio, looked dizzy as he went back to the round, uh, or to his corner at the end of the last round. Yeah, he was very hurt from the head shots and the body shots. Uh, the things are starting to show up now. Uh, that's what a good fighter does. He beats you over a period of time. Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Jim, very easy. Three to nothing, 30 to 27, Vasily Lomachenko. You know, Jim, I never saw a guy that's so ambidextrous. He snaps that right jib. He hits you hard with the left hand. I mean, it's incredible. Lands a million punches. You know, either hand, he's just unbelievable. And his ring generalship, beyond compare. He puts the guy where he wants to put him, controls the action. You know, he's got to fight just where he wants it, in the middle of the ring, and he's giving him a beating. Three to nothing, Lomachenko. The more you watch him, the more you begin to appreciate what Roy Jones explained in the last round. His hands are so fast because his mind has already thrown the punch. He's already constructed whatever motion he's involved in before his body goes there. Before it goes there. That's also from repetitions in the gym. You That's it. It's, it's, it's the years and years and years. For years and years. I mean, he turns into Willie Pep all of a sudden. Well, no other guy you know in boxing would have took that onslaught and his back not have touched the ropes. He made a three quarters of a circle, maybe a 360 even, around the ring without his back's back ever touching the ropes. But we've seen, you know, he was Jeff Fennick a little bit in this Good fight, now. and then all of a sudden he's Willie Pep in this fight. He's a combination throwing pressure fighter, he's a power punching pot shotter, and then all of a sudden he's a fleet footed escape artist. And he has hurt Pino, Piri Pino again with a body shot. And he uh, uh, created some stationary, you know, position here for Alperio Pino. Speed stopped moving after Lomachenko landed the hammering body shot, and Lomachenko found an advantage and took advantage of it upstairs. Alperio Pinko takes a heck of a punch. He sure does. And he Lomachenko is giving him some heck of a punches. Yeah. <laughs> so the question is, how many heck punches can he take? Well, you know. His job is to wear this guy down, continuously punch on him until one of them hits him and he hits the canvas. If that doesn't happen, then they just hit on him all night long. Up here, Pinya, you gotta give credit because he's applying real pressure and making Lomachenko work after a situation where a lot of fighters might not even be in the fourth round. Yeah, to to Papir Pinko's credit, he's smart enough to keep the pressure on after Lomachenko onslaughts him like this. Fantastic, oh, fantastic uppercut. Amazing Three, uppercut began that four, series of punches. Five, and then Lomachenko landed about six, eight more to put Pierre Pino down. Hey, That's the right? first time right? in 53 fights that Opirio Pino has been on the canvas. And that's the first time in 53 fights that he's seen Vasil Lomachenko. That's it. Hey, very <laughs> close attention to Lomachenko, everybody. This is a time, special time. fighter. Even by special fighter standards, you're watching something special. 
Hey! Hey! Don't do much pressure! I don't like pressure! Hey! Don't listen, listen to me, okay? Good one, nice. Here you see Chico laying a beautiful right uppercut from the outside, followed by a left hand and a good cross hook. Then he comes back and throws a one, two, three, well, a looping right hook, followed by two more to keep him backing up. And once he straightens up, bam, there's the overhand left, and down he goes. And Sean Latron got up like he didn't have no problems. <laughs> Coming into this fight, Vasily Lomachenko had 28 American professional rounds of boxing behind him. Sean Latron, our peer opinio, has been in the ring for 367 professional rounds, and Lomachenko is schooling him. Well, Sean Latron hasn't been to two, two Olympic Games. Right, that's the difference. Sean Latron doesn't have two gold medals. <laughs> Sean Latarn wasn't voted the best boxer at the 2008 Seoul Olympics. And we probably couldn't find Sean Latarn's other rounds on Wikipedia if we checked. And, and on top of all that, Lomachenko is just genetically like he's he's laced with fast twitch muscles. You can see it. His his hands move fast. His reaction and reflexes are super quick. Just hurt Sean Latarn again. This is becoming target practice for Lomachenko. The, the, the only weakness I see in Lomachenko maybe is his face tends to mark up from not too much contact. <laughs> well, he's got a mark on the left cheek. And given what we've seen of Alperio Pino's right hand, I'm guessing that's the result of head contact between Lomachenko and Alperio Pino because, you know, that happens quite frequently when you've got a southpaw against a conventional fighter. Particularly a conventional fighter who has to dip and throw to the body. Roy, that, remi damage. that remind you of anybody just then? Yes, it did. <laughs> <laughs> Would he throw four, four shots? Four or five with his weak hand. With, his, with his weak hand moving in the opposite direction. I mean, with a strong hand, but you know, it's a yeah. weaker combination hand. By the way, he's naturally right-handed. Oh, oh. He's one of the many who was turned around at an early age so that the supposedly stronger hand or the lead hand is in front. Well, that, you know, Harold had the right point before. He's ambidextrous. Well, that was his weak hand then. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the leather he's landing with his left hand shots. I don't think we've seen him throw with that kind of okay, sustained no, power to this point in his career. You know, well, he hasn't had to. He hasn't had a guy like this guy in front of him. Right. Gary Russell was take, much faster. Yeah. Who takes a good body shot. By Sean Latour. Yeah, very good body shot by Ophiri Pena. And he tries for another one. He's just saw Nicholas Walters destroy Nonito Donaire. Um, featherweight division has a very interesting matchup on its hands in Lomachenko and Walters. Very and, strong division. Yep. Yeah, and um, Lomachenko told us he felt the, st the stiffest challenge in the division is Johnny Gonzalez. But. Um, he, he doesn't really recognize Guillermo Rigondeau because Rigondeau's at 122 pounds. He thinks Rigondeau's too small. But um, Rigondeau's right there. I think Rigondeau's a little small, time, too. Time. But that's a wonderful fight. I agree. Four gold medals. Mr. High Tech, Chris Algieri, stretching it out in the dressing room. Getting the muscles loose. A daytime shot, and it is daytime here, outside in Macau. Official attendance inside the building here today, 13,201 sold out. Largest crowd for an event yet to take place in this building. That means a bigger crowd than a year ago when Manny Pacquiao headlined the pay-per-view card against Brandon Rios 
here in the same arena. There are also a thousand people watching on closed circuit, as we call it, in an adjoining room. So 14,000 plus live today in Macau, along with all of those of you in the United States who are watching on Saturday night. Now against Salido, who is a, a big pressure fighter, we saw Lomachenko get better as the fight wore on, as though he, he became more energetic in the second half of the fight. Here, though, he's fought at a faster pace early, much more offensive-minded early. We'll see what happens if this fight continues on into the second half. I mentioned it's a strong division, and some of the names have already come up. Lomachenko has the title belt. Johnny Gonzalez has the title belt. Nicholas Walters took one from Nonito Donaire, October 18 in Carson, California. Evgeny Gradovic has the title belt, and you'll see him next week on the undercard of the Terrence Crawford fight in Omaha, Nebraska. Hard left hand by Lomachenko, up and under. He's landed that shot two or three times to good effect. And although I agree with Roy that Rigandau is his smaller size means Lomachenko's favorite there. Um, that might be the best matchup of all. Great skill matchup. If we ever had a chance to see two two-time gold medalists fight against one another, we very rarely get to see two gold medalists fight one another. Who, by the way, both have a chance to be the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in boxing in the not-too-distant future. Time while Piri Pena is still there, still pressuring, still throwing real shots. Well, you got to give him credit, son. He's taking some real punches tonight, and he keeps coming right back. Well, not exactly a luxury life for Sean Latan or Piri Pena. Comes from a small town in Thailand. His parents had a farm. They grew vegetables on the farm, sold them or bartered them for the things that they needed. Lomachenko hammering him against the ropes. Looked like he took his sparring lessons getting kicked by a cow because he's taking some shots here that have to be almost equivalent to getting kicked by a cow. A small cow. <laughs> a featherweight cow. More like a racehorse. A thoroughbred. Yeah, that's a good analogy for Lomachenko. Well, the arm's a little short for a horse, though. That's why I went with the cow. <laughs> Alperio Pino got in his left hook to the body and landed it with authority. Ah. Every once in a while, he makes that dent. <laughs> December 13, Timothy Bradley, coming off his defeat against Manny Pacquiao, takes on another tough customer in Diego Chavez. You saw him earlier this year against Brandon Rios. Also that night, Mauricio Herrera, who some believe deserved credit for a win over Nanny Garcia in Puerto Rico earlier this year, faces Jose Benavides and Matt Korobet against Andy Lee. A couple of southpaws, neither of them tremendously difficult to hit. That could be a hellacious fight. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim, I've got it. 60 to 53, six to nothing, Vasily Lomachenko. You know, Jim, you got to give Vasily an extra point to round four for the knockdown. So that becomes a 10 8 round. That gives him an extra point. He's pitching a, a shutout so far. Jim, let me point something out to you. Thai fighters in general, I mean, I'm, I'm generalizing, all have very, very strong legs. The reason being is they started out in Muay Thai, which is, you know, a sport where you can kick your opponent. Then if you if you look at Sean Laton, he definitely has very, very strong legs. Very typical of Thai fighters. Six to nothing, Lomachenko. I told you he had been used to some kicks. Yeah, he, <laughs> he, he could use some uh, Muay Thai elbows right now to help him out, something. He spent eight years in Muay Thai before he took up boxing. The fighter you'll see in the next fight against Zoshi Ming, Juan Pichit, Wonsong Shai Jim, spent an even longer time 
in kickboxing before he took up boxing. Both of them said to us that boxing was rougher than Muay Thai. No, it's interesting. It's Lomachenko, though, who reminds me in certain respects more of a Muay Thai or Krav Maga or some kind of um, self-defense art where he just continues to throw punches, sometimes off the technically wrong foot, Roy, but he is more interested in landing the shot than doing something that would be textbook boxing. Well, I think everything he does is pretty much textbook boxing. It's just that he's a great boxer who also can fight. And uh, he can do both things. So you see a little bit of him boxing. You see a little bit of him really sitting down and trying to punch. He can do it all. He's a complete fighter. He's the total package. You don't get to see that too often. CompuBox tells us that Vasily Lomachenko has not thrown a left-hand punch in this entire round. Normally, that means that the hand has been damaged. And he's landed some very big left-hand shots, particularly uppercuts and left crosses coming in on an upward angle. And he's not throwing with the left hand anymore, Roy. He may have hurt it. Hurt his, he may have hurt his hand on the head of uh, Papiachino, Papiachino's. Um, he has a big head up front for a small guy, which means he probably is used to taking it, putting it down and coming forward with it. And if he brought his head forward while Lomachenko was coming forward for a punch, he could have injured Lomachenko's hand. This Here's sounds very counterintuitive to most people. Some skulls are harder than others. Yes. And here, you got to be careful with that right hand throwing it over the top like See, that. Yeah, it's hurt for sure. Yeah, he, he just hurt the again. left hand. And now he holds the left wrist, and then he pops Alperio Pino twice with the right hand as if to say, see, I can beat you with but, one hand. But there he had a, a left open, and, and he didn't take it. it. And here's the pro game. This He's is not three it. rounds. This is not three rounds you have to go through this with. This is 12 rounds. And suddenly the fight is very interesting. Here's your right. Excuse me, eight Keep your arms in place and stand. Stay, stay facing him and then turn left. If you fire, if you throw an open punch, does it hurt as well? Just show him this and then lift it up a little bit like this. Keep it open. Keep so you heard the discussion place. about the left hand. You see Lomachenko's mother and sister watching. In the past, in at least one situation, we've seen an Eastern European athlete retire because of this. Eastern European athletes have come to learn in recent years that this sport is largely dominated by the economics of the United States. And in American culture, you fight to the finish, meaning at this point, you go forward with one hand. That, for the moment, is what Lomachenko's doing. He's got five rounds to go against the determined fighter with only one loss in over 50 fights. The fighter obviously knows that Lomachenko's hand is no good. Lomachenko clips him with a right hook. Yeah, this is where that 400, amateur, uh, 400 fight amateur experience will come in handy because now he'll know how to survive with one hand, which most guys probably couldn't do in this, in this situation, but he should have no problem with it. Well, as so long as that other hand holds up. And if the fight has been scored properly through the first seven rounds, he doesn't necessarily have to be seen as the winner in the rounds well, to no, make no. it to the end of the fight as oh, the winner oh, in the oh. fight. Alperio Pino doesn't have enough rounds left to make up the gap. Unless he can score a knockdown. <laughs> right. Or, or a stoppage. When you know that the, the guy only has one weapon, now Alperio Pino can try to concentrate on taking just the right hand away. And meantime, Alperia Pinho has two hands. And if he has a hard enough head that Lomachenko broke one hand already, who's to say he doesn't break the, other, the other one? one? Right. Well, I think that Lomachenko is smart enough to know that if you broke one hand, don't throw the other one full speed or at full power because you could break the other one. And you can't win. This is not Muay Thai. You cannot win this fight using your feet. <laughs> when this happened against Mickey Ward in the second fight for Arturo Gatti, he shook the right hand, left it dangling at his side for about 30 seconds, and then went back to throwing it. 
which was stunning. Some fighters say it hurts for a while and then it stops hurting if you keep throwing it. Lomachenko may not have had that experience. He's not throwing the left at all. Well, Mickey Ward had no choice. Um, Lomachenko is so talented. You mean, you mean Arturo Gatti? Excuse me, Gatti had no choice. Right, Gatti, of course. Had no choice, um, especially in the middle of that fight. Uh, Lomachenko is so talented, he can try to do this, as Roy said, as Roy has done with one hand. Looking back at all our biographical material on Lomachenko, we know of no other serious injury. So this may be the first time that he's attempted to compete through an injury of this nature. Oh, he threw a left hand just okay, nobody throw, nobody throw. 17 punches landed by Lomachenko in this round, according to CompuBox, all of them with the right hand. He's not even fainting with the left. Well, he threw it one time. Yeah, we've seen Floyd Mayweather take a knee as a knockdown earlier in his career Bye. because his hand hurt so much in the middle of a fight and went on to win that fight. It was, were, you, were you trying to punch with your left again? Don't show your left. Just, just punch from underneath with your right. It is functional. Is that okay? Just try to show him that you are punching from underneath with your left. Just show your left hand and then punch with your right. And don't punch too hard. Be economical. You still have four, have four rounds to go with him. You understand? Just be economical. Save your energy from underneath, from the side. Vasily largely expressionless as always through all of that instruction by his father. Out. His father urging him, show the left hand, faint with the left hand, but throw the right. He didn't like that one left that Vasily <laughs> threw. Anything can happen in boxing. I mean, Lomachenko completely outclassing all pure opinion. Go ahead. Cruising. We're discussing other featherweight matchups, and then all of a sudden, he loses the function of one arm and has to try to now survive, and he continues to win rounds, in fact, against a determined challenger. Way back in 1986, in a heavyweight fight in the bad eyes, saw Terrell Biggs beat Jeff Sims with one arm. Usually, it's better if the lead arm is the one that isn't broken, and that's the case for Lomachenko. If his right hand were broken, he'd probably be in a far more difficult situation. A much more difficult situation. Okay. You okay? And you see the blood coming from the nose oh. of Alperio Pino is, even with only one hand, Lomachenko is able to draw blood from Alperio Pino here in round number nine. Nine of a scheduled 12. I wonder if it was Lomachenko's right hand if he wouldn't switch around and fight orthodox. He seems like the kind of guy who maybe could pull that off. He probably could. Well, we've described him as Superman, so it seems like he could pull almost anything off, but he's human, like all fighters, and this is a new situation. Throws the left hand twice, throws it twice more, throws another left hand. Suddenly, the left hand comes back. Do Let's we know see how his father feels about that. Do we know that it's the hand and not the wrist? We don't know. Because he was pointing in, to, the, to the forearm area towards the wrist earlier. Shaking that out. Well, it's probably more damaging over the long haul to punch with a broken wrist than with a broken hand. Neither is going to be fun, but he's throwing the left again routinely, frequently. Not throwing it with any power at all, but there it is. What it'll do, it'll eventually set up a great left hook if he continues to stick it out like that. Right hook. Right hook, I mean, yes. They turn right hand for a minute. Squares up. Uses the left hand to sort of jab with it, and now fires a power shot with the right. And there's the right hook that you were looking for, Roy. Usually, if you pit a pat with that straight left hand, it'll open up a right hook. But that would seem to be what he's doing. Lomachenko inventing on the fly in the middle of round <laughs> nine. You see this with special athletic fighters also. 
where they maintain that kind of electric energy in every round. Um, they don't let their opponent back in the fight because they suddenly ah. become flat in the middle of a fight. And that's Lomachenko. Looked like Lomachenko won that round. And now, let's take a look at a gathering of action heroes in Manny Pacquiao's Good. dressing room. The governor is talking to the congressman, or the former governor is talking to the current congressman. Manny Pacquiao up for re-election in May of 2016. He says he expects to be unopposed. Sylvester Stallone, to our knowledge, has not yet run for office. Only one of the three. Round 10 of a scheduled 12. Vasily Lomachenko in the black trunks with blue trim has dominated the fight against Shunlatan Arpiri Pino of Thailand, but he's fought the last few rounds apparently with a broken left hand. Harold Letterman, how do you have it so far? Okay, so I've got a 9 to nothing, 90 to 80 Vasily Lomachenko. Uh, I tell you, you talk about winning a fight with one hand. This guy is really winning a fight with one hand. I mean, it's amazing. Since he hurt that left hand, he's doing a terrific job with the right. He moves beautifully, he avoids Sean Latton's punches, and he, and he keeps on scoring with that right hand. I mean, you see, comes in hard, it comes in fast, he piles up points with that right hand. Amazing. But I gotta tell you, nobody fought through pain like Arturo Gatti. You were right when you said that. Nine to nothing, Vasily Lomachenko. Glad I was right. Hate to be wrong. Thank you very much, Harold. Two minutes to go in round 10. Sean Latarn Priopino trying to get something done with his body punching, which is hit bread and butter. But throughout the fight, he's been dominated by the quickness, the hand speed, the foot skill, the amazing overall talent of Vasily Lomachenko. Whose leg just came up? Someone's leg came up. I Lomachenko's think, leg came up. Yeah, I think uh, Priopino, Priopino need his leg, or their knees may have collided. Look that way. And that happens with uh, opposite-handed fighters a lot. The legs get tangled. The heads usually butt. Hasn't happened here yet. How fast Lomachenko can move and create an angle. Jim, you often talk about Manny Pacquiao's footwork, the best in sports, but Lomachenko gives him some run in that department, I think. Well, but you've mentioned Rigondo, who also has amazing footwork. <laughs> it would surely be interesting to see the two. You know, Nobody, nobody, nobody. Lomachenko just a way. little bit more stationary in this round and giving Opirio Pena more chances to land his left hook to the body. But that's an attrition punch. That's a wear you down over the long haul punch. And Opirio Pena has not landed enough of them to really put a dent in Lomachenko's armor coming in. Lomachenko better be careful with those right hands coming in over the top, Roy. Yes. But I think he has under, everything under control now, so I don't think he has anything to worry about. And I must too, I must say, Lomachenko did show improvement in this fight, Max. When we first seen him in the first couple of fights, he was not good at throwing long-distance punches. This fight, he threw some long-distance punches. So he is improving as he progresses in his professional career. Because like that, he wasn't really big on doing those type of combinations hey, nobody, when nobody. we first saw him fight. Everything was looping around or very close to his body. You get the feeling he learns from every round. Next Saturday, hometown here on lightweight title holder Terrence Crawford faces Ray Beltran from Omaha, Nebraska. Also that night, featherweight belt holder Yergeny Gradovich, as I mentioned, one of the four belt holders in the division in which you're watching Lomachenko compete right now, takes on Jason Velez. Gradovich. Siberian Rocky Ruslan Provodnikov's college roommate. Fights in the same time. Take no prisoners. Bam! 
Unless that's his common late fight expression, Opirio Pino looks discouraged to me. Highly. He comes out for the 11th. Both. As though he's been to a different world. You can just imagine him in the dressing room later saying, hey, I thought Chris John was good. <laughs> and, and Chris John was good, but there's um, a difference between a, a good, steady, long-reigning titleist and a guy who believes you're making, you're watching something out of the ordinary whenever you see him fight. Uppercut with the lead hand by Lomachenko. Tries to land it again, just misses. And he's using the uppercut like a right, like a straight right hand now. That's his power shot. Exactly. That's the one he's using to say, hey, I still can knock you out. If I land this left uppercut, a uh, right, uh, right uppercut, you may have problems. Fascinating how he's taken your implicit advice, Roy, to use the left hand as a decoy, throw it, pity pat with it, use it to set up right hand power shots. He was doing that brilliantly two rounds ago. Now he's back to being able to use the right hand as a power shot without even having to paint with the left. There he is. He's actually using the left now here and there with just enough sting to discourage Papiri Pinu from believing he's strictly a one-armed fighter. The way he switches feet on the inside to set up a punching angle, it's just amazing, really. You just don't see this. That and the amazing footwork. Great balance. Timing. Keeps the feet separated. I love it. You could watch this all day. Yeah, I could. If you like boxing, you could watch it all day. Tell you what, if he had a left hand, this fight would be over already. Yeah. Because right there, he would have landed that overhand left again. And right there as well. Uses the left to the body. I think, yeah, I think he just hurt him to the body with the left hand. No think yeah. he did. Now he's throwing the left with authority to the body. Still not using it upstairs with authority, but he throws it into the midsection. Thinks he can get away with it. It's been fascinating to watch him experiment with the left hand as he's going along. <laughs> what a mind. Again, I'll hear your opinion. Has had a shot at the lineal featherweight championship. Acquitted himself pretty well in that fight against Chris John, all things considered. Has had over 50 professional fights. Is the number one contender in a sanctioning body. And you can dismiss any of those things, but you put them all together and he can handle himself. And he got a chance to fight against Vasily Lomachenko for five full rounds, assuming they'll go through the 12th, with Lomachenko largely as a one-handed fighter, and he's still been out flat. It hasn't won a round. Look at those numbers. What a stunning exhibition. Last round, okay? Here's what we think happened. We think early in the seventh round, they had a small hand collision there. Lomachico threw that left hand right there, followed by that left hand, and that's the one we think caused the damage, because right there he backed up, he shook the left hand, and he hasn't really thrown it with authority since then. Great job in the tape room. Combing through the visual details of the fight to find the moment and finding it. <laughs> Three minutes to go. Vasily Lomachenko trying to finish off. A virtuoso performance. Fighting down the stretch with one hand against a hard guy, Sean Latarn Albiria Pinko, or Pinho. Once again, the name begins with a P, but it's pronounced Opirio Pino. Go figure. <laughs> and, and as we mentioned earlier, what a fortunate circumstance to have a guy, maybe, you know, you could argue the greatest amateur resume ever. I mean, certainly it's, uh, it's in the conversation in Lomachenko. 
who, when you just look at his talent and where he is already in his professional career, he's potentially in the not too distant future a pound for pound number one spot contestant. To be in a division where Nicholas Walters just looks so impressive against Donaire, you mentioned Grotovich earlier, Jim Gonzalez, and Rigandau sitting right there at 122, four pounds south. I mean, the, 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 the potential opponents for Lomachenko and the fights that can be made, any permutation of those guys is an excellent fight. Lomachenko's 26 years old. We may be watching him for 10 or 15 years. What a treat. <laughs> Between rounds, our interpreter in Lomachenko's corner tells us that his father, Anatoly Lomachenko, said to him, you can throw the left in this round, just don't throw it to the head. So what has Vasily done? He came out in the first minute and threw it three or four times to the head of Sean Laton of Maria Vinya. <laughs> hey, his dad said he could throw it. Head, body, I, don't, I can't tell the difference, Dad. I was just throwing it, and his head got in the way. <laughs> <laughs> Uppercut, straight left hand, brilliant. Jab. Takes an Alperio uh, Pino jab. That's the best jab all night. That's why his father didn't want him throwing it. Look, Alperio uh, Pino lowered his head, and the left hand landed right on the front of the skull. Ran right into that forehead. Another amazing display <laughs> of combination punching. This is breathtaking stuff, really. With defense built in. Hurt oh, the he left hand again. again. This yep. is shaking the left hand, shaking the left hand, Father. firing with the right. Father knows best. Well, the good thing is he has Father time beat right now because he only okay, has one round left. He's only got 25 seconds left. Outlanded Aperio Pino by more than 280 punches. I think, in the fight. I think Aperio Pino just landed the best right hand he landed all night long. And it did absolutely nothing to Lomachenko. And he's been thinking, I, I waited for that. <laughs> now, frankly, Aperio Pino doesn't get any leverage on the right hand anyway. It's his left of the body that's given him 51 wins in his career, and it didn't win him this one as Vasily Lomachenko puts on a show in Macau. Here you see Lomachenko being hard-headed and through the left hand to the hard head, and look what happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dad, I guess you were right. <laughs> Came in with a record of two wins, one loss. Most likely going to go to three wins, one loss. Definitely the best three win, one loss fighter anywhere in the world in boxing. Maybe the best in history. Very special fighter, Lomachenko. Head shaking stuff. Harold Letterman's unofficial scorecard, 120 to 107. Harold, who are the three official judges? Okay, Chip, I'll bet you anything you want that me and the three judges have the same exact score. Let's get to the judges. Salvin Lagumbe, <laughs> uh, also a local judge, had uh, Terrence Crawford over Ricky Burns. That was the right score in Glasgow, Scotland, when, when uh, Terrence won the title. Patrick Morley from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, good judge, yet, yet Evgeny Gradovich, uh, winning over, well, you saw the name, uh, and that was the right score. And Michael Perdick, one of my favorite judges in the entire world, does a good job all the time from Delray Beach, Florida, had Carl Fresh, uh, you know, uh, well, he had George Groves winning the fight with, uh, with Carl Fresh the second time they fought. That was the right score. Even though Fresh knocked Groves out yeah. much later. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to Michael Buffer and hear if Harold's right that it's 3-1, 20 to 107. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Venetian Macau, we go to the scorecards. All three judges, Michael Pernick, Patrick Morley, and Salvin Lagumbe, all score at the same 120 to 107, all to the winner by unanimous decision, and still WBO World Champion Vasily Lomachenko! So glad I didn't bet you that Maserati, Harold. <laughs> it was right on the tip of my tongue. You would be driving a Maserati next Thursday. Final copy box numbers. Lomachenko landing 282 more punches. Throwing 
more than a thousand of them and more than 500 more than Alperio Pino and doubling Alperio Pino's connect percentage. And by the way, he landed virtually every, every hard shot in the fight. Where were those 86 punches of Furia Pino landed? I didn't see him. <laughs> okay, well, here's Punch Zone to show you that. Here are the punches that CompuBox found Opirio Pino landing, probably with a microscope. Uh, and as you can see, 48 of them were upstairs and 38 of them were downstairs. And here are the punches that Lomachenko landed on Opirio Pino. And they had to do a lot of counting to get this done at CompuBox. And as you can see, only 59 of them were body shots. Uh, it seemed like more than that, but he found the target upstairs over and over and over. Part of the Pearl River Delta, 